I recently built this radio and I won't recommend anybody else doing it. It's a waste of time. It has very poor sensitivity and well, the selectivity doesn't matter because you can hardly hear anything. I get three stations where I should probably get five and out of those three, two of them are terribly weak. Now I suspect one of the problems is that the wire they specified this 32 gauge, it's 0.2 millimeter, maybe too high a resistance. Um, and I don't know about the ferrite rod. Maybe it's gobbling up too much power, something like that. But in any event, uh, this is just no good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repurpose it. I'm not going to give it away. I'm not going to let it sit on my shelf. Uh, I'm going to try to turn it into this radio. This is another one capacitor crystal radio, and it has good characteristics. It will pick up five stations and it has, so it has good sensitivity. The selectivity is also good. And so for a capacitor radio, this is a, this is a good choice. So again, I'm going to see if I can't turn this into a ferrite core version of this. Now, uh, let me show you how I came up with the calculations. Uh, if you see something wrong, let me know. Uh, I don't want to pass along wrong information, but yeah. Okay. So let's uh, see the logic behind what I'm going to do. What I've done to get my measurements for the new coil is I've considered the fact that both of these capacitors are roughly the same. So we need a value for this coil to be roughly the same on this one. This one I measured with my inductance meter at 205 microhenries. So that means I need to produce one of roughly the same order, 205 microhenries on this side. So I also want to change the wire size from, I can't remember what this one is. Um, I think this is 0.8 millimeters. I don't remember the wire size for that. Um, this one is 32 and yeah, so this has 60 turns of 32 for the main coil. This one has, uh, I think it's 130. Yes, 130. And then it has taps at the 20, 50, and 130 position. So there's 20 turns here, 30 turns here, and another 80 turns here. So we need to have this amount of induction and the same ratio of these turns. Can't just, you know, automatically do 20 and then 30 more and then 80 more. Have to have the right ratio here. So I did that. I, uh, again, I measured this, got the 205 microhenries. I measured this just for fun. It came out to 195. So these are roughly on the same order. I mean, theoretically, this should work about as well as this. Um, and then I just, yeah, I just ratioed it out. So the new coil will need to have 21 turns here instead of 20. It will need to have 32 to the next tap. And then it will need to have 84 to the end. And that is exactly what I did is I took my secondary core, my ferrite core, and I wrapped it using those ratios. So there's 21, there's 32 turns. And then I added another 84 turns here. You may say, what's the stuff on the end? Uh, that's thread because I found that's a really good way to hold down the, the wire. Uh, my other idea of wrapping a wire around here uh, and soldering to it was a fail because it shorts out the, uh, the coil. So yes, this works rather well and it's ready to go. So now what I need to do is tear this apart and install this coil and then rebuild it along the lines of here of this one. I will also, of course, supply the uh, circuit diagram for this so we can see where we're going. This was my first attempt at a ferrite rod uh, coil for the crystal radio and it has poor uh, sensitivity. It's a poor design, but uh, I wanted to see if I could improve on that, as I said earlier. And this is an air core type coil that works very well. I was rather surprised by it. In fact, it's the only variable capacitor tuned radio that I would uh, well, recommend as of now anyway. Um, and here is what I thought I would try. I would combine these two. I would take this, this coil design 
here and I would implement it with a ferrite rod. And so basically it's the same layout, same everything. And uh, here is what that radio looks like if you haven't seen that video. It's uh, got the air core, the air core uh, variable re uh, resistor, variable capacitor. And otherwise, I mean, this section is exactly the same. Uh, the coil, uh, we're gonna go for this design where they have the uh, end tap, the 20 turns plus 30 plus another 80. And here are the dimensions if you want them for the uh, mounting of the mica capacitor. And this is for the uh, ferrite bar holder if you want those. Back again. I have finished setting up this board and it should be identical to this radio with the exception of the ferrite coil. This should be the equivalent of this air coil. So let's look at the circuit, make sure I've got it right. The first wire here goes to the antenna. First wire here goes to the antenna. The first tap here comes over to the ground and the first tap here comes over to the ground. Moving across, the next tap comes over here to the diode, next tap to the diode, and the last connection on the coil here runs around over here and connects to the static plates of the variable capacitor. And this runs around here and connects to the static plates of the variable capacitor. Continuing on around here, we got the diode, the resistor, earphone, resistor, and the other side of the earphone. Here we have the diode, earphone, resistor, other side of the diode, uh, other side of the diode, other side of the earphone, and then it runs over here to ground. And this one is hard to see because it passes underneath the capacitor, but it's right there and it comes over here to ground. So these are identical other than the fact that this one is using a ferrite core coil and this one is using an air core coil. Okay, what's left to do is go put it on the oscilloscope and see what it'll do for us. This is our usual test setup. We have the scope back here. It's attached to the earphone outputs. And so you can see what's happening here. This is the antenna, this is the ground lead, and this is our ferrite core radio, which we have modeled on this air core version. So, um, yeah, let's go through the channels so you can see what's happening. This is the loudest station. You might want to keep that in mind how it looks. And we'll tune down this way. Now, these are opposites. The one tunes, this one tunes from high to low, this one tunes from low to high. But here's this station. Uh, that's one station. And you'll notice, watch my finger here. This is one station. It goes from here to... Here, where we start getting the next station. So almost a quarter of the dial is one station. It's not even very loud, uh, but the selectivity is poor is what I'm trying to say. Now here is the loud station and it occupies uh, about that much space. And then There's the third station down there, also very faint. So yeah, um, kind of a poor, uh, poor sensitivity and poor selectivity. Okay, so let's look at the next radio, the one we model it after. Trade over our ground and antenna, if I come on there. One, two, like that. And then we have to move our oscilloscope and we will hook it onto the earphone outputs and then I need to trade earphones like this let's get this out of the way okay so this is the loudest station and you can see it's just blowing it away I mean it's just yeah let's turn through the stations we got the maximum here go this way. Faint station there. Faint 
faint station there. Loud station there. Guy talking there. Whoops, I wasn't on station. There he is. And we can get one more down here. Nope, looks like not today. Oh, there it is. Okay. So there's no comparison. I mean, theoretically, these are the same radio. Uh, this is implemented with a ferrite rod and this is with an air core. And now you can see why when uh, contesters select uh, their, their coils, they use air cores. Um, yeah, I guess the benefit is you get this in a smaller space, but the only way I'd recommend this is if you hook up a, an amplifier. And if you hook up an amplifier, then you have a transistor radio. So uh, I can see now why they use Litz wire in this transistor radio because yeah the ferrite's absorbing some of the energy and to get the maximum out of it they have to use Litz. Probably not by choice because it's more expensive and harder to work with but it is um, well it's a necessity. So um, yeah I'm Actually, I'm going to repurpose this. I just can't see keeping it. It's, you know, not nearly as good as one of these. Um, it doesn't really save me that much space. And I don't know. Uh, but anyhow, that's it uh, for our demo. I hope you found this useful and interesting in your crystal radio experimentations.